Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Beardsworth Gonzalez Gymnasium on the campus of New Bedford High School, where tonight the New Bedford Cable Network is proud to present Boys High School Volleyball Action. It's the homestanding Whalers of New Bedford High School taking on the Brockton Boxers. Joe Cabral and Pete Braley with you from the Beardsworth Gonzalez Gymnasium in the Ed Rodericks Court. The matchup between New Bedford at 4-2 and two on the season and Brockton, conversely, at 2-4. and four. New Bedford hasn't played since we last saw them April 14th, Joe, in an exciting 3-2 win over Durfee. So it'll be interesting to see how the Whalers' layoff has affected them, if at all. Brockton is coming off a 3-1 win over Catholic Memorial. They played in Woburn last Thursday. So uh, Brockton lost their first four games, the season opener against Taunton. Then they lost to Quincy, North Quincy, and Greater New Bedford. So the starting lineups, Jacob Lee, number one. Number six, Jason Bryant. Number seven, Matt Duart, a senior. Lee Mendes, number four. We'll see Jesus Castro. And uh, Aid Lopes. And the head coach is Jack Olson. I think I missed number nine, Dylan Him. Now we'll have the starting lineups for the New Bedford Whalers. Introduced by Coach Ben Caturley. Starters for the Whalers, number one is sophomore Devin Centeo. Number 13, sophomore Amr Sali Tavares. Number 15 is sophomore Davon Shields. Number nine is junior Jensen Farnworth. We'll call his name a lot tonight. Number three is senior Connor Silva, who's also the libero. Dilson da Costa Teixeira, or Texera, I'm sorry, number 10. And number 18 is Captain Carter Barbosa. So this is your starting lineups. We stand now for the national anthem. You're watching high school volleyball on the New Bedford Cable Network. Our national anthem from the Beardsworth Gonzalez Gymnasium. I don't know if you noticed the uh, guys were singing along. They got a little ahead there. Yeah. Point, point, the adrenaline going. <laughs> yeah, a little bit anxious, Pete. Joe, the last time we saw New Bedford play, they were led by Carter Barbosa, who had 38 assists and 12 service points. Nick Rosa led the way with 15 kills. Jensen Farnworth added 11. Amir Salatovars had seven kills. Dilson Texera, eight kills and seven blocks. That was one of the more exciting boys volleyball games I had seen in a while. Yeah, we had a great match here. New Bedford and Durfee and expecting more of the same here tonight. New Bedford and Brockton.
This is the first conference game for Brockton. They are in the Southeast Conference like New Bedford is. New Bedford has uh, one win in the conference against Durfee. And of course, these two teams used to be in the old Big Three Conference when it was New Bedford, Brockton, and Durfee in the conference alone, but no longer. New Bedford serving here to start off the match. Brockton in the road, black with red, and on the outside, first kill of the match belongs to Dylan Him of Brockton. One of the seniors, he's also a captain on the boxer squad. Brockton with the serve here now. That's number three, Miranda. On the outside, New Bedford a tip there from Salih Tavares. Could not put it away, but ball was out on the return from Brockton, so the point to New Bedford tied up at one. Back to serve will be Ronas Ayala. Ayala listed oh. as an opposite, and it is a service ace for Ayala. Oh, trouble handling that. Jason Bryant for Brockton. So first ace of the match for either squad. It belongs to Ronas Ayala. Middle of the floor for Brockton. That was Jason Bryant. And then oh. a ball set up there nicely for Dilson DaCosta Texera. And he was able to put it away. So first kill of the match for Texera. Kind of a change-up style of kill, Pete. He went up strong and then just tapped it. And Brockton tried the same thing there. New Bedford able to keep it alive. On a set to the outside here. Big hammer there that time from Giovanni Young, but could not put it away. New Bedford there with a the block. Middle of the floor. Nice block. Oh, nice block there by Salih Tavares as Brockton went to Jason Bryant. And New Bedford's blocking in the match against Durfee Pete was outstanding. It was, it was. And Salih Tavares, big part of that. That's Ayala with another ace, second of the match. For Ayala and New Bedford with the early 5-1 lead. Middle of the floor, that'll be Bryant playing it over safely. New Bedford with a chance here. The tip oh. again from DaCosta Texera, his second kill of the match. He is so much fun to watch. His ability as a blocker is, is really outstanding. And intimidating, as you could see there. That time, Bryant just tried to do too much with it when he saw DaCosta Texera and number 10. Oh, that is DaCosta Texera and uh, Nick Rosa. And just tried to do too much, put it into the net. 7-1, New Bedford leads it. Timeout, Brockton. And a good thing to note for about uh, Amir Salas of ours, he's a sophomore. So two more years on uh, Coach Ben Caturley's team here. Yes, so that's outstanding for head coach Ben Caturley, who's turning the program around here at New Bedford after several down years following the exodus of Steve DeRossi, who was here for over two decades, Pete, and constantly had teams ranked at the top of the charts, won state championships, state titles, and then New Bedford with some issues for a while, really getting their squad back up to the capabilities, uh, the standards set by Coach DeRossi, but uh, Ben Caturley certainly feels like he has the squad back on track here. And Ben just recently had a volleyball clinic during school vacation here at the high school. Did not have a chance to ask him how well it was attended, but it's good to see coaches realizing they need a strong feeder program. They yeah, certainly do. And on the outside there, that was Salih Tavares. Kick saved by Jason Lee. But getting an overpass, and Salih Tavares with his first kill of the match. Amir Salih Tavares. On the outside for Brockton, that's him. And then New Bedford setting up Rosa on the outside, and Nick Rosa with a bomb. His first kill of the match in New Bedford with a 9-1 lead. 
Nick Rosa had 15 kills in that game against Durfee. He gets his first tonight. And the Whalers lead 9-1. to one. Violation will be called there against the Costa Texera. Uh, as Brockton changed it up there and just played it over quickly. But caught him off guard, I think. Caught New Bedford's to Costa Texera off guard. Ended up with a carry. Brockton to the outside here. Swinging attempt there from Bayadon Lawal. Violation to Brockton into the net, so the point to New Bedford. They lead it 10 2. This is Connor Silva. If I remember right, Silva had quite the game. Didn't oh. really show up on the scorecard, but just the number of assists he had in that last game. He played an outstanding game as the libero. Oh. On the outside, an absolute bomb there by Furquan Biodon Lawal. And that's the last time I will say the <laughs> full, full name, name of that young man. I give you props for trying. It'll be Biodon Lawal from now on. That'll be tough enough. On the outside, nice. Lead done there by Jason Bryant, his first kill of the match for Brockton. Yeah, just Ronan Ayala could not get to that. Made a good effort. He just saw the void there along that right side of the floor, and here he is at the service line, Jason Bryant. And it's a service ace for Bryant. First service ace for the boxers, that by the junior captain. Overpass there, oh. and another kill for Brockton. This time, Giovanni Young, New Bedford with the overpass. A couple of mistakes there from the Whalers on those last two serves with from Bryant. Fingertips, he was able to make that one go right down. Oh, nice, nice block, block there against Salih Tavares. New Bedford able, however, to keep it alive. Nice work there by the Whalers. Oh, that is, that is about us. As bad a carry as you'll ever see. I mean, I saw that from Matt Duarte. He just caught it and then said, oops, <laughs> this is the wrong sport. And he knew it right away, too. Yeah, you could see he little... just threw it back up in the air like just a little bit of a hesitation here. Is this football or baseball or no, this is volleyball. You can't catch it in this sport. Tip there. New Bedford is there. Brockton keeping it alive. 12-5 Whalers. Nice, oh, nice block. block there that time by the boxers, Mendes. Oh, Brockton playing their best point of the match. Someone into the net. It certainly looked like New Bedford as their blockers got up there and then. Might have been Nick Rosa. Too close to the net. Good volley by Brockton. Let's see if they can rally back here, down by six. That was their best point of the match. This is Giovanni Young. First service error. Brockton with some substitutions upcoming here. Number 16, Jesus Castro comes in to replace Young. First time we've seen Castro, and that's a service ace from Rosa. Nick Rosa with a kill so far, now an ace. 14-5. New Bedford leading it. That was Castro. Then Brockton just playing it over safely. That was Matt Duart. Oh. And then on the outside, Farnworth. For some quiet so far. We yeah, haven't I was gonna seen say, much from Jensen so far. First time we've called his name. He was a big part of the win against Durfee. Yes, indeed, Pete. And checking back in for Brockton will be Aid Lopes. He's a senior. On the service line, Lopes. Bayodon Lawal has gone out. And Farnworth, ball was good. Down the line. Kill so number one. Kill for Jensen Farnworth. 
You can see, uh, I believe it's Matt Duart speaking to the ref at the chair. The Bedford kept it alive on the kick save. Didn't that go off a foot? By Dilson da Costa Texera. We got to look at that on replay. Yeah. I didn't think your foot was uh, yep, eligible. You're allowed to use your foot. You never see it at the college level, or very rarely. But volleyball is about keeping the ball up. You can use your knee technically or anything. Let's see if we have the replay. I don't know if we have it in the truck. I did not know that. That was that, a kick. That yeah, you, you can use your foot. Yes, you can. We see it happen a lot. Rarely does it work, but New Bedford keeping it alive here. Farnworth playing it over safely. That's Farnworth with a tip. Oh, Farnworth was there. New Bedford it. able to keep it alive. DaCosta Texera kept it alive for New Bedford. Long point here. Middle of the floor. DaCosta Texera did not get a lot on it, but just enough, Pete. It's like that bloop single over the infield. It's credit for the kill. Yeah, that's exactly right. Just but enough to get it over the blocker. Like to mention during warm-ups, by the way, Joe took two off the head, so uh, we're going to pay yeah. attention here. Yeah, make sure I don't have a concussion. <laughs> Fortunately, that's the lightest ball that's hit me in the head in my lifetime. <laughs> Many others were a lot heavier and harder than that. Point for the Whalers up 18-7. 18-7 here in set number one. New Bedford in control. This is Shields. On the outside, Brockton. Oh. Nice work there by the Whalers. They keep it alive. With Carter Barboza playing it over safely. That's Barboza again, oh. not this time. And yeah, Barboza tried to set that ball, but it went backwards near the New Bedford bench. And Brooklyn Rodericks could not get there. This is Lee Mendes. New Bedford setting to the outside, and Farnworth off the blocker, and that's a kill for Jensen Farnworth. You don't want him to get hot, and he just might be doing that. 19-8, New Bedford leading it. Best of five at the varsity level. We saw New Bedford win the junior varsity match today in straight sets. Two out of three, so when you win two consecutive sets, you're the winner at the junior varsity level. Varsity, you need to play five. Oh. And that time, the cost of Texera just trying to do a bit too much. He was away from the net, and his angle on that kill attempt was not accurate. For Brockton, this is number seven, Matt Duart on the service line. One of the captains. That's out. Just out. Very close, but it is out nonetheless. Point to New Bedford, 20 to 9. The Whalers lead it. And back to serve will be Ronas Ayala, who already has two aces. He in rotates this. into the service line when Farnworth checks out. That's a violation. That's again, you two can't hands. strike the ball. Yes, Pete, indeed. Can't yeah. strike the ball twice. Exactly. So you need to have those two hands working together in unison. If they work independently, that's striking it twice. That's a violation. There's a ball that is out on Brockton. Another point to New Bedford. Whalers 22-9 over the Boxers. Ayala's had some success here in set one on the service line. Second time he's been there, and they've racked up a bunch of points on his serve. On the outside, played over by Salita Vars. New Bedford is there. And then from the outside, nicely, Nick Rosa Used the left hand. He was at a bad angle, Pete. Our viewers, I don't know if they can see the antennas that are on each side, but of course the ball cannot go outside the antenna or hit the antenna. Has to come inside the antenna. New Bedford on a roll here. 24-9 set point. Ayala on the service line. 
Nice serve there by Ayala. Oh, oh nearly a, it's a service ace for Ronis Ayala, his third of the match. You could see that one knuckling over, Pete. Very little rotation. And New Bedford takes set number one by a score of 25 to 9. It has been a bit of a difficult year for Brockton. They have lost, as I said, they lost their first four uh, matches by scores of three to nothing, three to one, three to nothing, three to nothing. They won their last two with three to nothing and three to one. So they have struggled, and we'll see if they can rebound. I would think this is a must win coming into this second set against New Bedford. Yeah, especially when you're really dominated in that first set. By a score of 25-9, you really need to have a good performance here in the second set. Checking some of the other spring sports here at New Bedford High. The baseball team got their first win as they won Saturday, beating Oliver Ames by a score of 11-7. It was a good day at the plate for Jaron Goodine. He went 3-for-3 three three with three runs scored and four RBIs. The Whalers are 1-7 this year. and They are in Brockton this afternoon. Softball is playing Right out the back door, right to your right. Okay. They are 3-2 and two on the year. They are hosting Brockton this afternoon. Joe and I will have their game Wednesday when they play the Dartmouth Indians. Boys lacrosse is 0-3. They're off until Friday when they go to Taunton. Girls lacrosse, 3-1. and one. They're hosting Oponiquit this afternoon. Girls tennis is 1-4. Boys tennis is 0-5. Oh there you see the Whalers and head coach Ben Caturley. And that is Jack Casey with the silver hair to your left. Uh, Jack, I'm sorry, Jack. Yeah, Jack Olson. Jack Olson. And he has been the Brockton coach for many years and has had some very good squads. Great matchups in years past with head coach DeRossi, but uh, this year starting off slow at two and four. Had a good conversation with the uh, UMass Dartmouth basketball coach who's been there for how many years? 30 some odd years, the, uh, the head coach. Of the men's basketball. Yes. Yep. And uh, one thing I asked him was, he's obviously had to change over the years in his way of coaching. And he, he did say that today's athletes are, are not like they were. Uh, he, he's found that he maybe can't be as tough as he used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. Not saying the players are so, I mean, you can read into it what you want. Right. But they just have a, a whole new way of, of being approached nowadays. And, and uh, he's obviously adjusted. And uh, yeah, when you coach for 37 years, think about it, Pete. You're going back until the 1970s, right? I think it was, yeah. Uh, no, 80s. No, 80s. You go 80s. back to the yeah. mid 80s. Yeah, mid to early, early to mid 80s. And so that's that's a long time ago. That's when, you know, Larry Bird was playing <laughs> and Magic Johnson. And that's it was a different style of basketball, first of all. And the players were used to a little to be to be accurate, a little firmer type of treatment. Um, that's the Bobby Knight era. Like yep. Bobby Knight today, yep. most people say he could never coach today. And, of course, we know that even when he was finishing up, he was being criticized for his style of coaching. That would never fly today. Never, 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 never. Interesting story at the Senior Bowl. So the Senior Bowl football this year, Patriots coaching staff was the staff coaching uh, the West squad. And an anecdote is... The last day before practice, I don't know if we can get it in here, so we'll tease it okay. and talk about it when we either we get a timeout or between sets two and three. We're underway here in set two, so keep it tuned right here. And there's a tip there from the Costa Texera, and that's already his fourth kill. He's just so comfortable at that net. And his powder blue sneakers, I'm sure, help. That reminds me of uh, was it Kiki Hernandez for the Red Sox. Yes. Wearing all these Different. odd color cleats. Yep. Once upon a time, that was not something you could do. Ball on the outside, long, so another point for New Bedford. They had to be black, right? And then you get your players wearing white spikes. And, and then you remember the A's were the only ones with white. Right. 
And that was, of course, when Charlie Finley, Finley. Charlie O. Finley was the owner of the A's. Oh, and they no weren't one, ready. No one there for Brockton. 3-0 New Bedford. Jason Bryant went up high, but did not time that right. Wondered if the ball was set for him, and it ended up falling. There he goes. There's a ball off the blocker, and that's a kill this time for Brockton on the outside. And Jason fine work Bryant, there. One of the captains. By Bryant. Second kill for Bryant. 3-1 New Bedford leading it. That's Duart serving. New Bedford keeping it alive here. Oh! No, they do not keep it alive, so it'll be a service ace credited for Bryant. So Los Savars. Uh, for Duart, I'm sorry. So Los Savars just wasn't ready for that one. Get crossed up a bit. Oh, and that's a hammer. Middle of the floor. Teixeira's having a night. That's number five for Dilson DaCosta Texera. He'll rotate out here. And for New Bedford, it'll be Take Connor a look at this. Silva on the service line. Watch this. Set, and that's just boom. I mean, that's his, you can't set it any better than that if you're Carter Barboza. And just a hammer from DaCosta Texera. If you have a chance, notice Barboza's got two different color sneakers on. Talking about different colors. He's wearing, what did you call it, pink on the right foot. And fluorescent red on one foot and fluorescent green on the other, and the ball is out. Point to New Bedford. Yeah, so those are the fluorescent colors. Point to New Bedford. No, they'll say Brockton. He said it was out. Looked like uh, New Bedford was going to get the, uh, looks like it was in. It looked like New Bedford was going to get the point. They do not. It's 4-3 New Bedford. I think the floor judge maybe caught something different on the side. That's Ayala, Barboza. Point for the Whaler. Oh, carried it. That seems to be the sign. And that was the call. From and the that, ref. That is what I saw. So it is a carry against New Bedford. To the outside, and it looked like it went off the blocker. Rosa, yes, so it's a point to New Bedford and a kill for Nick Rosa, his second. 5-4, New Bedford leading it. Amir Salih Tavares on the service line for the Whalers. Tape, ooh, nearly a service ace. New Bedford is there on the outside, just punched over by Rosa. Again, Barboza outside, got it to Rosa, and he hammered it off the blocker. Ball fell on the side of Brockton, so another kill for Rosa. And a point to New Bedford to make it 6-4. Salih Tavares. Kept alive. Oh, Brockton keeping it alive there. On the outside is Rosa again. This time it's out. Hit the tape and then went out. 6-5 Whalers. Oh, nicely done. Middle of the floor. And the put away there by... Devon Shields, his first kill of the match. A sophomore. Oh, tipped there by Barboza, but Brockton was there. New Bedford keeping it alive here. That was Farnworth. He could not put it away. On the outside, the ball is well out from Bayadon Lawal. Ball is out on the serve there by Rosa, so point to Brockton. 
Brockton hanging a lot tougher here so far in set number two, trailing at only 8-6. At one time they trailed in game one by 10 points. So keeping it close here. This is Jesus Castro. Farnworth hammering one on the outside. Brockton is there. Can no. I get it over? So whenever the ball goes up on your side of the floor and hits in the rafters and the ceiling, it, it's fine. You can continue to play it as the ball is on your side. Once it goes over to the other side to your opponent and hits up there, then the point is over. You've lost the point. So Brockton there trying to keep it alive just could not. Of course, the challenge is once it's hit the ceiling, Pete, or those rafters, it's bouncing all over the place. There's a kill on, uh, credited to Leedson Mendes, his first kill of the match, and nicely placed. We could see it here, Pete, as it yeah. came right at us. He had plenty of room. It was definitely in bounds. 9-7, New Bedford. That was Silva. Barboza sets on the outside, and Farnworth well out well, too much no downward trajectory that time looked like he was set up well again whenever you're you're setting up uh, a teammate you're trying to get it as close to the net as possible where you can strike that ball with a downward trajectory on the outside farnworth with a tip brockton is there keeping oh. it alive and then new bedford was caught off guard so brockton has tied it at nine they were just able to get that in between about three players for the Whalers. Point for the Whalers. Another kill for Da Costa Texera on the back set. Six so far. Six kills for Da Costa Texera. And on the service line for New Bedford. Carter, Carter Barboza Carter. and I wonder if he has another pair of sneakers just like that. Yeah, the opposite uh, opposite colors. <laughs> I think those are two pairs of sneakers. Unless they sell those like that now. Violation called here against New Bedford. You can't go over the net like the official just signified. He said he went over. Right. Back to serve is Lee Mendes. And we're tied at 10. One of, the, oh. one of the rare bad sets by Carter <laughs> Barboza, but the Costa Texera reacted so well, it ended up being a kill, even though, again, it was not a good set at all. Here's Ronas Ayala. He was on the service line for key points in that first set. Oh, that was absolutely set up perfectly on the outside. And the hammer from Jason Bryant. You can see when he set up well, Pete, he's dangerous. And yes. that was well struck. As you said, that was perfect. Matt Duard serving now for Brockton. And that's oh. the cost of Texera. It's out. Now, Texera's claiming it hit a hand, but I yep. guess he's not going to. I don't know if we have a replay, but get the ref to go along with them on that. We saw a controversial call or two, to be frank with you, right, when we were here In last. That, yeah, against Durfee. There's a kill on the outside for Nick Rosa that time. Went up the hand of the blocker. Rosa with four kills. So All we're tied at 12. Yep. On the outside, a tip there. Oh. And I guess New Bedford was over the net. Yep, into the net. You could see the signal there. It looked like it was the Costa Texera. 10 was the call. So 13 12, Brockton. Was their first lead? Might uh, be. With a one point lead, it's Brockton serving. On the outside, what reactions there by New Bedford to just keep it alive on the block? Whale is there again on the outside. Oh, what a put down. It was Rosa on the outside, judged 
where the blockers were located. And instead of just striking it into the hands of the blockers, just positioned and threw it down. Possibly threw it down boom. the sideline. Rosa with his fifth kill, serving at Salih Tavares. Nice block. Credit Barboza with that. Barboza along with number 15, Shields. Wales with a 14-13 lead, leading it one set to Love. That's a service ace. First ace for Tavares. Lee Tavares. Oh. That's the first service error for the Whalers today. 15 14. See what the call is here. We got one. Yeah, the referees are going to meet. Because yeah, there's a one, disagreement here. The uh, chair umpire gave the point to New Bedford. The judge on the floor gave it to Brockton. So they'll come over and discuss. Let's see if they can come to a consensus. And the point is for Brockton. They say the point to Brockton. So we're tied see if at we can 15. See it. Set and. Yeah, you can see the reach over where maybe. Hmm. There was some question on the outside hammer there by Rosa, but Brockton was there with a dig. That was Silva. Barboza sets to the outside again for Rosa. Another dig by Brockton, playing much better here in set two. Ayala there nicely to handle that on the back line. Brockton suddenly playing a lot better here in this second set. And that ball was handled close to the end line by Brockton. Oh! And then middle of the floor, nice kill there from Lee Mendes. Excellent volley. You kind of had to wonder who was going to make the first mistake. And Brockton playing much better here. Leaving at 16-15 in set two. But they hand a point right back here on the service error by Bryant. Service error so far, Brockton with three, New Bedford with one. Basically just giving your opponent a point when that happens. And they give it right back. New Bedford says, okay, we appreciate that, so here. And the service error by New Bedford gives Brockton, uh, Brockton the 17-16 lead. So Nick Rosa comes out. Farnworth goes back in. Rosa in there to serve. And Jesus Castro serving here now for Brockton. Silva was there. Farnworth on the outside went with a tip, but Brockton's Castro was there. Off the blocker, New Bedford trying to keep it alive here. Point to Brockton. The dig attempt, ball went off the tape, and it's 18-16, Brockton. Remember, Brockton lost set number one by 16 points, 25 to nine. Oh! And now they're leading here in set two by three. Carry there on New Bedford. And a timeout by Ben Caturley. Ben Caturley calling the timeout. So I can finish my Bill Belichick story. So he comes yes. in, head coach. He, he, uh, ha they've designated different coaches to responsibility. So Troy Brown was actually the head coach of the West squad. But Belichick was there coaching the entire time, regardless of the fact that it, he wasn't officially the head coach or, or any coach. Right. But he was there, and he just came in, got the whole team around him on the last day of practice, and said, now, one of you guys are good enough to beat out the worst player on my team. So none of you are going to be in the NFL unless you show me something different. Wow. So n you better do it today. And he <laughs> just walked away from the group, walked out, went on the practice field. 
And that's, uh, again, he, he obviously, you know, he, you can't complain about that, but that's an old school type of right. approach where you're just saying, you know, this is the way it is. And, and you, you have to wonder if he really thought that uh, or if he was of, using it to of motivate them. Yeah, of course yeah. not. Yeah. And anyone who knows, knows that he's trying to use it to motivate. He knows many of those players are going to be in the NFL. Right. But he, he wants to see who's going to take that and either, you know, go in the corner and take their ball home right. Or, right. or they're going to respond and have the best practice of of their uh, – of their senior, of their not their senior bowl. It was the East West Shrine game. I said senior bowl earlier, so East West Shrine game. So credit Davon Shields with that point, stopping that Brockton run. Now New Bedford back to within two, and Shields serving and gave the point right back. New Bedford with some uncharacteristic mistakes here, Pete, in set number two. Again, big point there. Following the timeout, then you just give them a point back on a service error. Not a single service error in the first match, but no. they've had three here. Oh, and nice. There is the Costa Texera taking the overpass. He's been steady. Best performer here for New Bedford in the match thus far. Eight kills. Eight kills. 20 to 18, New Bedford still down by two. Key points here. Barboza, nice serve. Brockton just playing it over. Yeah, New Bedford that time safely over by Silva. That's Centeo outside. Farnworth. He's had a rough match. Yeah, too too far again, too long. Yeah, he's not been in sync here. His timing's been off and Put that ball well beyond the end line. Oh, that's an outstanding serve there that time by Mendes. And Farnworth went outside the antenna. Yeah, it might have been hard to see, but the antenna, he went just to the right of it. 22-18, New Bedford needs a run here. Good serve again there by Mendes, and then the Costa Texera into the net, so Brockton in control here in set number two, 23-18. Well, I mentioned at the beginning, they didn't want this second set to slip away. They've had a number of games that were three nothing straight set wins. And Mendes has an outstanding serve, and New Bedford there. They're going to say point to the Whalers. I don't know. It looked like it might have gone off the tape. Again, yeah. we saw this. If, if it's off the tape, it's off of New Bedford. I don't know if we have the replay. If it's off the blockers, of course, it, then it is a point for New Bedford. Watch it here. Let's see. Looks like it hit the tape it to does. me. It does. It does. 100%. Just hammering it off the, the net and goes out. And that's off the blocker that time. The kill to Castro on the outside. And Brockton with a set point, 24-19. Bunch of them. They'll have five set points. Serving Bryant. Tip on the outside by Rosa. But Brockton is there. Silva, Barboza. Nice job. And DaCosta Texera, middle of the floor with that short set. Puts it away. New Bedford still down four points. You need, of course, to win by two. So New Bedford has to win four more points consecutively to keep this set alive. Connor Silva and a timeout here. Brockton trying to freeze trying to ice New Bedford. Connor Silva, a very reliable player for the Whalers. We may not call his name a lot as far as kills are concerned, but he's often the first one to touch the ball. Indeed. He's had a number of digs. He's handled a number of hot, hot balls. Not like the ones we used to get when we were kids, though. Remember the... Uh, 
they're not quite as popular as they were when we were kids. Remember those cinnamon, oh, the, yes. those cinnamon hot balls that yep. we used to get? You'd go to the corner store, Ooh. and they were like a penny. Penny or, candy. Yeah, yep. and you'd yep. buy those, and you put them in your cheek, Pete. And remember that for a while. <laughs> we're like, oh, your cheek was like kind of numb, right? I could, I could go. Th- a- Atomic uh, Fireball. Was that what they were called? The, the official fireballs. name. We just called them hot balls. But yeah. But, yep. but Dan in the truck, Dan Cabral, came back with a the, wealth of knowledge. And maybe we. Yes, I'm sure you had many, and we we all had many. And if we we got to get a picture of it, Dan. And maybe we can put it on the screen of an atomic fireball. There's a nice ball that's block. blocked right at the net. New Bedford staying alive here. The ball is out. Point for the Whalers. And so Whalers have been successful in holding Brockton off for two of the five set points. This is their third attempt. Whalers are there. Barboza, middle of the floor. Yes. And it was Devon Shields. New Bedford trying to respond here. The question is, is it going to be too little, too late? Have denied three set points. Here's number four, Connor Silva. And if New Bedford gets this point, Jack Olson will call another timeout. Let's see if I'm <laughs> Nostradamus here. All right. We'll see. The floor judge is talking to the scorer's table. Okay. I don't know if there was some type of appeal on the rotation or something like that. I can't think of anything else they would be checking over there. Mm. Unless they think something about the score, but we know the score is right. We've been following it closely. Silva serving. New Bedford is there. Silva, Barboza, Salita Vars. Another point. New Bedford has denied four of the five New Bedford set points. And it looks like Jack Olson is not going to call a timeout. So I'm wrong. No, I'm not Nostradamus. Nostradamus today, no. Here we go. New Bedford looking here. The tip. In? No. And all of that effort, and Rosa put it wide. New Bedford came back, denied four of the five set points, but could not stop Brockton from winning set number two by a score of 25-23. Well, they came out strong in that second set after losing the first one. Yes. So we've got three by minutes here, Pete. Bit. And yes. you brought up a very interesting topic. You said that on your podcast, mm-hmm. you talked about the five top uniforms in baseball. My son and I do a show on Fridays, the, the Pete Braley Show, and, and one of the weekly features is a draft. And we draft teams. You pick the top five, anything. We've done TV theme songs, games when we were kids, all these things. And during the football season, we did the best football uniforms, so obviously we did the best baseball uniforms. And one of my – I was telling Joe before the game that it's amazing how much heat we're getting on the Internet – because yeah, again, the, it's a very whenever you do those the the uh, the list type of right. uh, whether it's uniforms or whether it's players or how could whatever. you forget this? So how what were your you? just what were your five? Uh, what were your five? I'm trying to remember, my I my first pick is because my son went first and he picked the Red Sox red, which I would have picked first. Okay, but I went with the which is a modern uniform. Yeah, I went with the classic Yankee pinstripe. And there was one commenter on Instagram who said, how can a Red Sox fan possibly pick the Yankees? And my answer is, it's a classic uniform. It's just a uniform. It's It's so clean. It's, you know, it's just... Certainly so should be in the in the in the top five. Well, right. What were your what were your other four? I went with the uh, San Fran, uh, not San, the uh, St. Louis Cardinals, um, powder blue. Okay, that's not, that's new. That's, okay. that's that's kind of new. They they had a version of that powder blue uniform. I think it was it was either the seventies or the eighties when it first came out. But yeah, I I'm trying to remember my the other three I had, but. Uh, my son did pick the uh, Houston Astros 
The one that Nolan Ryan yeah, wore 80s, with the colors. Yeah, the 80s, yeah. The yeah, 80s style, one. maybe late 70s, 80s. I did pick the Cubs with their pinstripe uniform. Good, good I classic one yep, again. I think that's good. Oh, uh, I picked the Oakland Athletics green jersey. Oh, okay. that was that's a team a modern that, one. That was a team that had three jerseys in the, in the 70s. Yeah, they, they did. In, fa in fact, we were talking about cleats earlier and, and sneakers and different colors and all of that. And then they were the first ones under Charlie Old Finley <laughs> to have the white cleats. They were the only ones. When everyone else had black cleats, they had white cleats. And they had the uniform. Remember the uniform they had was like a vest style yes. with the yep. undershirt. And that is yellow a, a top one, yeah, yeah. Or, or green. My son liked the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates yellow. That was uh, an old school one. Again, that was the We Are Family generation. My second pick, the Cardinals blue, which is a newer. Yeah. Can we pause the game, please? We're talking <laughs> uniforms here. My son liked the Mets black. There are so many alternatives now. Yeah, I go with all the, and there's the A's. You went with the A's, A's green. green. That but was that, my the third The old A's one is a classic. They're yeah. just a white, or they had the yellow as well, vest with the undershirt, whether it was green or, or gold undershirt. And ironically, when I played, uh, I think it was Pony League and a Kushnet, we were Warren Brothers. They used to ran, run the quarry. And we had Oakland Athletic uh, uniforms. Yep, nice uniform. And I made a glove save, and it was not even my glove hand. I also picked the Angels red. My son went with the Brewers blue. And my last was the Orioles orange. Okay, so you took a lot of modern uniforms. I would have gone more with the old school, probably because I'm older. <laughs> not than you, though. You're st older than your son. And we're, we're kind of the same generation. I think so. so we, yeah. we know kind of the style. And, and if you remember, how about the, of course, you would remember, the spandex when they had the whole era when there were no button downs. They were all the polyester. Wasn't that uh, like the, the 70s? Mid-70s, yeah, 76? Yeah, 76. Oh, you yeah, certainly. Yeah. There's a kill for Brockton, middle of the floor, and Jason Bryant. And Brockton all of a sudden here is, is very dangerous. They're leading here in set. Two is uh, set three is early on two one, but playing well. Yeah, that was of course Fred uh, Lynn, yep. Jim Rice, Karya mm -hmm. Stremski, mid seventies. Still alive. Middle of the floor, tip there oh. that time, and nice in play. by the Costa Texera. We've had more balls come our way. Tonight than we yeah in yeah, any other game combined right. But I love some of the comments we're getting like this one. Somebody said the Blue Jays have four different uniforms that are better than the Angels red. It's like well it's it's everybody's opinion you know. Well that's good that's good but but when you get that that many comments Pete then that means people are paying attention. Yeah. I there's there's no bad criticism in that regard on some uh, topic like that where. You know, really doesn't matter. No, it doesn't much. <laughs> Whalers three now, two over Brockton. Silva's there every time, isn't he? And into the hands that time of number six, Bryant. He could not come up with a block, so the point to New Bedford. Now four two Whalers. Ronas Ayala has been a key member of the Whalers on the service line. Salil Tavares plays it over safely. That was number nine. Him oh. unable to come up with the kill initially, but Brockton does come up with a kill there. Quick put back by Giovanni Young, his second kill. And number two, Young. See the size difference there? Jacob Lee, number one. He's the libero. Yes. And usually the... Libero, who's, more, who's a defensive, uh, defensive player primarily. He's always a smaller, oh. quicker player generally. Power from Nick Rosa. An absolute hammer from Rosa. And I have him unofficially for seven kills. Look at that. How do you defend that? Uh, you, Jacob Lee if, if could you not. Don't, if you don't block it at the net, you pretty much don't defend it. Here's Bryant. He went 
hard at the blocker and it went off the hands of Shields. So it's another kill for Bryant of Brockton. He has five on the match. 5-4 New Bedford. That ball is well out and out of our reach this time. Good try, though. I would have needed, I have, a, my arms are about 34. <laughs> I would have needed about a 46, I think, to reach that one. Oh, tough. Ball not handled well that time. A nice slide, an impressive slide. I remember you used to slide like that, Pete. <laughs> but that was Ayala sliding backward. You slid forwards like that. A long the, time ago. On the foul yeah. balls. If my kids were here, they'd go, him? Are you sure? <laughs> you sure it was him? And that, that hurts when they do that, Pete. Yes. It yes. really hurts. Brockton here playing much better. And New Bedford forcing the action here. And you see what happens when your blocking is good? You saw Rosa that time try to change the floor, go across the court entirely, and his pass was off the mark, hit the net after two consecutive blocks by Brockton. And Bryant. Ace. And it's an ace for number six, Jason Bryant. His third ace of the night. And it's 8-5 Brockton in set number three. Brockton has found their groove here after going down in the first set 25 to 9. Holy smokes. Brockton on fire here in sets two and three. There we go. Then finally on the outside, Rosa. Can't take it for granted here. And New Bedford is seeing now that Brockton has has players. They might be two and four, but I think you mentioned, first of all, they won their last two, Pete. They yes. Were, they were 0 and 4. So we don't know if maybe players were missing or they're just rounding into, into form. On the outside, the kill there kill. for Lee Mendes. I feel a timeout coming for New Bedford here soon. It's 9 6, Brockton. Brooklyn Rodericks has gone in for the Whalers. And this is Jesus Castro on the service line. And that ball would have been close to going out. And it's Mendes, middle of the floor, off the blocker. Another kill for Lee Mendes. That's four now for Mendes. And Brockton with a 10 6 lead. Brockton playing their first conference game of the year. New Bedford has one win under their belt against Durfee. And that time, nice work there by Carter Barboza. Seeing how well Brockton had been blocking, he decided, I'm not even going to set here. I'm just going to play it over and try to catch them napping. He did. And it's 10-7. Jensen Farmworth checks back in, whose name we haven't called too much tonight yet. See if he can get hot. To the outside, Farnworth, that time kept it alive with the left hand. New, New Bedford survives a kind of wild point, ball going off the net several times. 10-8, Brockton leading it. That was a big serve, but it was out. And it wasn't out by much, it was, an, it was well struck. It looked close, it did. Back to serve will be Aid Lopes. One of the nine seniors on the Brockton squad. New Bedford has five. Brockton oh. thought they kept it alive, but it hit the tape and just did not crawl over, Pete. Needed it off the right arm of Mendes to just creep over. Actually, that was Duart, but hit the tape and stayed on the Brockton side. Shield serving for the Whalers. That's Mendes. Nice block. That was a team effort by Texera and Farnworth. 
New Bedford back to within a point, 11-10. You can see the importance of blocking. Ooh, that was close to a service ace for New Bedford, but oh. miscommunication by the Whalers. They let a ball fall that they should have been able to handle. Shields was late getting to that. I don't know if he thought he had help coming from someone else, but it was not there. And it's 12-10. Whalers there, laying it over safely. Middle of the floor. It's in. That time it was number five, Aid Lopes. And Brockton's not going to give this up easily, and they lead it 13 10, and New Bedford calls a timeout. And Pete, after set number one, I'm sure on the New Bedford side, a lot of the players are thinking 25-9, we'll be out of here quick. You right. know, we're, yep. we're, you know, we beat them by 16 points. They're two and four, we're four and two. Human nature starts to kick in. All of a sudden, set number two, yeah, you're hanging, yeah, they're hanging in, but you know what, we're still up two. And then all of a sudden, Brockton continuing to play well, gaining confidence. They go ahead in that second set, had five set points. New Bedford tried to turn it on. Right. They turned back four of those set points, but could not turn back the fifth. Brockton takes that second set, 25-23, and now we're in set number three with Brockton leading 13-10. The Whalers have not played since we were here on that Friday night. They had a week off. Not saying they maybe didn't have a practice or two, but they didn't have a game last week at all. So. I wondered at the beginning how that layoff would have affected them, and what we're seeing, maybe it has. Certainly a possibility. And then, of course, the human nature factor. You, you dominate in one set, and all of a sudden, maybe you think, like, eh, we don't have to play we our got best. This. Yeah, we got this. We don't have to play our best. And, and now they have to play their best. They're trailing at 13-10 in set number three. This is the start of a busy week for the Whalers. We'll get to that during the next break. And Mendes has the best serve here that we've seen in 2023. That time, middle of the floor, perfectly set up for Da Costa Texera. And he hammered that one. And Jelly's just comfortable in that role, as that was all muscle memory. 13 10, Brockton. Bedford with Texera was there on the block. And then New Bedford with another miscommunication, Pete. We've seen that several times from the Whalers where players are standing around looking at their teammate to make the play. Something we did not see in the match against Durfee. We did not. And we did not see it in set number one. Duart serving for Brockton. Salih Tavares could not come up with a kill. Brockton's Jacob Lee kept it alive. Farnworth, and there's Lee again. What you'd expect from your libero. There's the tip. And Dilson, DaCosta, Texera. New Bedford, I think, in this set would be, in the match today, would be lost without him, Pete. Let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven kills. And this, the third set. Outside. Oh, nice. Both teams surviving at the net, the violation against Brockton's Lopes. Something that uh, Coach Jack Olson obviously disagrees with. Yep, he's saying, no, he, he did it the right way. Mr. Official. <laughs> Another block for DaCosta Texera. All tied and up Brockton's, at 14. Brockton's appealing to say he reached over. They say no. New Bedford there. We're tied up at 14 now in set number three on the outside. Tip there by Young. Could not put it away. Oh. So he went over. 
Yeah, it's a carry. You, you can't, you can throw the ball down, but it can't be like you took it and you kind of like went Carried from here. And, yeah, just yeah. moved it. If it's straight, if it's a straight action, it's fine. But if you kind of like sweeping it, it's not going to work. What a work. Uh, dig there by Ayala. And then on the outside, Rosa off the blocker. Point to New Bedford. Another kill for Nick Rosa. He's been. I have nine. Very present here today, as Pete mentioned. Nine kills for Nick Rosa. 15 apiece. Obviously, you're in set number three. The odd sets are key, of course. We're tied at one apiece. Connor Silva serving. On the outside, tip. Bedford there. And the Whalers come up with a big point. Devon Shields. Maybe getting their confidence back for the Whalers. 16-15, they lead it in set number three. And the service error. Silva, who's so dependable, just served it into the net. Whalers now leading, unfortunately, in that category. Five service errors to three for the boxers. That's Bryant serving. Off the blocker, let's see. And the whistle. Brockton into the net. Seventeen sixteen, New Bedford. Brockton is there. On the outside, that time Rosa went down the line and kept it in. Nobody was there for Brockton. 18-16, New Bedford. Whalers trying to go up two sets to one. Salih so Tavares. On the outside. That's out. The hammer, but it's out by Rosa. Coach Ben Caturley was yelling out some instructions to his team. Jesus Castro in to serve for Brockton. Ball that was hammered. It's in the rafters. Brockton keeping it alive. Oh, Good what job. work there by Brockton and Bryant. Now New Bedford experiencing the same thing. Played it up into the ceiling. That's Mendes. Nice dig there by New Bedford's Ayala. Tipped there by Rosa, kept it alive. New Bedford with players flying all over the floor. And the point goes to Brockton. We've got a player down over by the bench. I think he's getting up. Tremendous hustle there. Kevin Centeo went to crashing down. And he's just on the sideline. He got wiped out. Yeah. Castro. Duarte set middle of the floor. Mendes went with the tip, couldn't finish. And then down the line, it's Rosa. New Bedford back up by a point, 19-18. Both teams, Pete, know how important this set is. I was just going to say that neither one wants it to get to away from them. There you see uh, Captain Matt Duarte. He's gone to the chair umpire several times. Every time Jack Olson tells him something, he goes over and talks to the official. Tape. On the outside, Mendes. It's ball in. was good. He's been impressive here lately, Pete. Lee Mendes now with five kills, but is playing well and has a tremendous serve. Jump serve with topspin. Cade Lopes is in for Bayodon Wall, and he will serve. Lopes. Tape over. Farnworth on the outside, went with a tip, and he ends up with a point. 
See, Matt Dewar, number seven, very emotional for the boxers. Yeah. He, is, he is a captain. And then you see a tip like that that, that falls when the, play, when the set was really not a good one. He had to use his left hand, so it, it can be frustrating. Would you credit on that last one, Barbosa? Uh, Farnworth. Farnworth. Jimmy Bedford has gone to their bench for Ryland Brody to serve. First time we've seen Brody. On the outside, Farnworth, but that Brockton gone out. played. It looked like it was going out. Point for the Whalers. Point to the Whalers. I am pretty sure that ball was on its way out, but Brockton it played it. It certainly looked like it. It was a one-hand stab. And Farnworth has had trouble tonight. Yes. He's had uh, a lot of balls go long, but a timeout for Brockton. So Jack Olson calls for a timeout again. I don't know if we have that on replay, but you'll see Bryant. Number six, Jason Bryant, reach out with one arm, and he's very close to the end line. So let's see if we can tell, Pete, if that would have been out. And yes. that, that was definitely out. That would have been out. Way out. And so sometimes just mistakes like that. Yep. Judgment mistakes. And maybe it, it's not even playing really in anyone's mind right now. It, the point went by so quick he never really looked back like why did I play that. So as we said neither team wants this set to slip away. We're tied at one apiece. So the winner of this obviously with an advantage will go into set number four and as you've said a number of times Joe you don't want to go to that fifth set. Well we did that. Um, just a little over a week ago, right? right. When we yep. were here against Durfee, and we saw the ups and downs of that fifth set. Could have gone either way. We thought at one point that Durfee had won. Here's Mendes on the back set. But and it's blocked. out. It was blocked, but out. Mendes was smart enough to let it go to the floor. Watch this jump serve here from Lee Mendes. About 10 yards back from the line. Oh, oh. of course, he hits his worst serve. <laughs> he, he had hit so many good serves, and that one. You built him up. Yep, just to you know, knock him down. Well, he kind of knocked himself down. I built him up there. He had been so consistent with those power serves. To the outside. That was Bryant. Well long, all of a sudden, New Bedford looking good here in set number three, 23-20. And another timeout from Rockland Jack Olson. immediately calls another timeout. So just remember, at that key point when Bryant reached out on a ball that looked like it was going long, that would have, it would have been tied at that point, Pete, at 21. Instead, New Bedford got the point, and now they lead it 23-20. And almost the same play on the other side of the court. As a hard hit by Brockton, New Bedford did let it go, and it went out. So they're up 23-20. It's definitely been a, a great night for Dilson DaCosta Texera. Outstanding, Pete. And also Nick Rosa, both of them with a number of kills. Which is what good teams do. We mentioned that Jensen Farmworth seems to be struggling a little bit tonight, not scoring as many kills as we've seen, especially in that Durfee game. So while he may be struggling, his other teammates pick him up. And DaCosta Texera just seems to be getting better every match, Pete. He's even playing better here today than he did against Durfee, and he was outstanding then. He just hammered That's one long. that was out. So the Brock, uh, boxers with another opportunity as Duart goes back. Brockton is there with a block. This is Young, Giovanni Young, just over safely. 
Salih Tavares put it into the net. So Brockton with consecutive points. Back down only by one, 23-22. Looked like New Bedford was in good shape there, Pete. The timeouts by Jack Olson. Used very wisely. Yes, close together. Tip. Brockton is there on the dive by number seven, Duart. Farnworth over with a tip. Duart will set middle of the floor. Bryant. Oh, no. And Brockton is tied it at 23. Credit a kill to Jason Bryant. Tied at 23. This came out of nowhere. And New Bedford calls for a timeout. If you're Coach Jack Olson from Brockton, I, you got to be happy with what you're seeing from your team. They're 2-4 and four on the season. They lost their first four games, three of those straight set losses. And with the exception of the first set tonight, they've played well. Yeah, and think about it, what you just said. They lost their, out of their first four, they lost three of them in, in straight sets. Tonight they lost the opening set, Pete, 25-9. You right. would say, well, Maybe it's going to be another straight set night. But right. no, Brockton has refused to accept that. One set number two, very resilient. And now here in set three, even maybe more so, down 23-20. You're, you're right on the precipice. You need the next point. I mean, if it goes 24-20, again, you've got four set points to turn away. They, at 23-20, won the next three points. They have the serve on their side. And... It's 23 apiece with one of their better players, Matt Duart, on the service line. Oh, they're going to call that a violation on the Costa Texera, and Brockton has a set point. Duart just playing it over. They're going to make New Bedford. Come away with a point here and the block at the Got net. It. And Brockton on the block by Bryant against Acosta Texera takes set number three. Pete, that came out of nowhere. It was 23-20 with New Bedford possessing all of the momentum. Jack Olson had called one timeout at 21-20. Calls another timeout at 23-20. And then his squad comes out and gets the next five points. Just an incredible showing by the boxers here tonight. Do you think New Bedford is showing a little rustiness after not having a game in a week? Uh, again, I don't know if it's rustiness or it's... it's uh, if you were to really ask me, I would say Brockton is giving them more than they anticipated. Especially, again, you come into it looking at the record. It's human nature. You just had a great win over Durfee. You see, well, we're 4-2. and two. They're 2-4. and four. They've lost these matches, blah, 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 three straight. They lost their first four. You beat them 25-9. Uh, human nature kicks in. You know, we're going to win here today. Yeah. You know, we don't need our best in set two. And all of a sudden... The old word momentum comes into play. And momentum started to roll Brockton's way in the second set. And they played hard and kept it throughout that set. And then late in the third set, they supplied their own momentum. So New Bedford does have a busy week ahead. This game being played on Monday, the 24th. Their next game will be Wednesday the 26th at Taunton. Then Thursday the 26th, uh, 27th at Quincy. Wow. Then Saturday afternoon they will host Greater New Bedford of Oak Tech here at 145 on a Saturday. That game was originally scheduled for Good Friday. They didn't realize that when they scheduled it, so they postponed it because of the religious holiday. Monday, May 1st, they will host North Quincy. Friday the 5th, they're at Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech. Monday the 8th, they're at Barnstable. For Brockton, this is their first conference game. They'll have another one Wednesday when they host Durfee. Then on Monday, May 1st, they host Quincy. Then they're uh, home for a few games. They host Durfee on the 26th, Taunton on the 1st, and they host Quincy on the 3rd. Whalers are out for 
set number four. In fact, both teams are out with a minute still left on the clock. So a little eager? Yeah, both squads eager to get out there. So normally, three minutes between sets, they both got out on the floor well over, with well over a minute left. New Bedford has Farnworth, Texera, Barboza, Silva, and who am I missing? Is that Centeo? They have Centeo on the floor? Devin Centeo, number one. We've not seen him out there very often, but he is out there right now. And also Tavares. This is Mendes. There's that jump serve. Silva was there. On the outside, Mendes on the dig. Point to New Bedford. I would imagine that head coach Ben Caturley told his squads, guys, we better not mess around here in set number four. This is a good squad that we're playing against. Well, as you said, the uh, head coach, Jack Olson, has been there for years. So he's well known. There's a point for Brockton. And Bryant. Jason Bryant is a fine player, as is Lee Mendes and Matt Duart. They have fine players. They have several very good players. Here's Matt Duart. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the Costa Texera absolutely hammered that one off the blocker. Could have heard that one out in the parking lot. It was an absolute rocket by Dilson to Costa Texera. Is Connor Silva. Barboza sets to the outside to Rosa, but he just had to play it over cautiously. Tip there that time from Bryant. Again on the outside, it's Rosa. Brockton is there. Every point being much more hotly contested here now than in set number one. Is in. And Ayala's push shot to the far side of the floor is in. New Bedford, of course, needs to win this fourth set to push it to a fifth set. Have a softball final from outside. Gets to it after this point. At the net. And I think Bryant went into the net, Pete. Point to the Whalers. Let's see, maybe not. They're sending the ball back towards the, the Brockton, Brockton side. So it's 3-2. New Bedford softball defeated Brockton this afternoon, 17 to five. Wow, impressive performance there from Harry Lowe and his squad. A three-run homer by Haley Chenard was a big help. Salita Tavares into, into the net. Into the net. We're tied at three. Side. Brockton was there, but played it up into the rafters, and the ball came straight down. And so the point to New Bedford. And you can never tell when it gets up there where it's going to bounce. Yes. Oh, the ball hammered. Bounce around. New Bedford able to keep it alive. No. Again, a, a dig there that put the ball up into the ceiling, but there's the cross members, the cross beams, and it hit that and just ricocheted all over the place. Oh, nice setup that time for Shields. He threw that one down quickly. 5 4 Whalers, set number four. Brockton leading it two sets to one. So we either finish up here in set four, we'll go to a fifth set, and Rosa into the net. 
New Bedford basically played a flawless set number one. Since then, it's been up and down for New Bedford. Yeah, they've struggled with their serves. An issue they did not have in that first game. Did not. Oh, a Bedford rare miss there. by Silva. Reacting just in time. Whaler's trying to keep it alive. That's a carry there on Farnworth. Not much he could do. He was down on the ground. No. And can't really control your momentum when that happens. When you can't dive for a ball that's coming down, but it's coming like on an angle, you're just reacting and you kind of scoop it. That's Farnworth. That one's in. That one is in for Jensen Farnworth, his fourth kill of the match. He's had a little trouble with his range. He's been hitting the ball a little too strong, not getting down on it enough. That's the whole key, Pete, right there. you got to get the ball close enough to the net to hit down on it, and then you have to hit down. You need that downward trajectory. Mendy's there, but it was Centeo on the back line to keep it alive, and then Centeo went wide. Shields goes out, Silva comes in. Seven six Brockton. This is the way it's been since set one. Set number one, it was all New Bedford. Since then, it's been back and forth between these two squads. On the outside, Farnworth just playing it over. Brockton there. Struggling. But they are able to keep it alive. Tip, oh. tip there by DaCosta Texera, could not put it away, and then Brockton into the Mendes, net. yes. The follow through by Mendes. As he tried to put that over pass away, Pete, he went into the net. Impressed by Texera, who went up as if to kill, and then at the last minute decided just to do a little tip. Point two, Brockton played it off the blocker. This is Mendy's. Played over by Salih Tavares, but Brockton is there. Brockton not giving up any easy points here now. Santeo got it to Barboza, then Farnworth. Brockton is there. Tip blocked. And again, Brockton is there. And then the ball off the hands of the blockers on the outside. It was Dylan Him. He had the first kill of the match. And that's his second. So it's taken him a while to get another kill, but gets one and it's 9-7 Brockton. Very well played point by Brockton, keeping their cool. There's Mendes, that ball is well long. He started to struggle with that jump serve, had such great success early on. And the Whalers send Rona Ayala back in, in place of Farnworth. He's there for his service talents. On the outside, Rosa could not put one away. And then Brockton going cross court there, and it's him again. Oh, can you say it like that? Him again? It's him again. <laughs> yes, it's him again. It's Mr. Him again. 10 8, Brockton. That was Rosa. Had to reach back, threw off the blockers entirely. You can see Rosa like reaching back for his shoulders. <laughs> like, where, where's my shoulder? Is it still with me? That's Connor Silva's serving. Here's a tip. Barboza was there. The ball is out. Brockton. 
just resilient. I, the best word I can come up with. Yes, definitely, it, it fits. 11-9. On the outside, Rosa. Brockton is there to keep it alive. Centeo, no, Ayala on the far side. Rosa, and the ball was good. Hit the tape, and it, I thought it was going to be out as a result, Pete, but it, it stayed in, in yeah. along that line. Point for the Waiters and a serve by Amir Salah Tavares. Blocked there by Boz Barboza. Ball cross court. Salita Tavares was there. Oh. And then yep. nice reaction there by Bayadon Lawal. So New Bedford tried to dig it out, but just unsuccessful. That's Bryant serving. Middle of the floor. Mendes, another kill for Lee Mendes. Well, here's what I'm convinced of. New Bedford is going to have to win this match. Yes. Brockton is not going to hand it to them with mistakes. So the Whalers have to just step up their game here, trailing it by three and set four. If you look at the scoring, it's been a pretty even game for the Brockton team. They really don't have anyone who's really standing out. They've spread out their play. They're scoring well. Good point on your part, Pete. Between Mendes, Bryant, him. He's had three kills. It's about where the points have come from and then relied on mistakes from New Bedford. Centeo serving. Into the net. Seventh service error of the evening. And that's obviously big. On the service line, Jesus Castro. Brockton leading at 14-11. Oh, big serve there by Castro. New Bedford keeping it alive. And then Farnworth just tipped it over and no one was there. I would think if you're do you target the tape when you're serving it definitely can help you yeah you really can't but you try to keep it as low toward the tape and as low over the net as possible yeah. and that's for sure nice point tip. to New Bedford there that was the cost of Texera again and I'm running out of room on that card for him yep stringing out the points 14-13 Brockton. They hammered it off the blocker on the outside. That was Bayadon Lawal. He's been quiet, but now has two kills here in set four. We've had three close matches. That's a good serve, and Rodericks was there. That's Farnworth. Long. Looked like it went off a blocker. No, they're going to say it's out. Wow. Again, I'd like to see the replay. Looked like there was a thud thud to me, but I don't know if we'll have time to do so. Brockton serving here. Farnworth tip. Point for New Bedford. Let's see on that see previous point. This. Now, Farmworth is here, number nine. No, maybe not. No. I tried no. to rely on hearing two sounds, but maybe it wasn't. And it's ace. a service ace for Barboza. His first of the night. 16-15, Brockton leading it. If New Bedford wants to win set four here, this is a good time to have a surge. Off the tape, and it's a service ace. 
Barboza, a couple of them now. Both teams with two timeouts left in this set. Off the block. Barboza to the outside to Farnworth. Ooh, that looked like it might have been long, but Brockton played it. And that's another point to New Bedford. Whalers on a roll here. I would think if you're Jack Olson, you, you let your team know that anytime Farnworth goes up for a kill, he's been long very, quite a few times tonight. He has. Point to Brockton. They've tied it at 17. Mendes. Well, he struggled with his serve. It's just in his head now. He had served so well with that jump serve. Now it didn't even come close. He didn't hit it hard, and it still was well short. Right. Tried to take something off it to make sure he got it over, and it, and it would have gone under the net, to be honest with you. Ayala serving. New Bedford leading at 18-17. Bryant off the blocker. And the point to New Bedford. Uh, point to Brockton. Tied at 18. And Bryant, Jason Bryant, has been outstanding. He leads the boxers with what? Nine. I have nine, nine kills, Pete. Trouble. What a dive there by Ayala. And then off the speaker, but New Bedford able, Brockton able to keep it alive. There's Ayala again. Silva over. This is a big point, tied at 18. Off the blocker. Brockton again keeping it alive. That's Lee. Middle of the floor, Bryant. Oh. And Ayala couldn't get there. Did his best. He might have been able to let that go. I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was close. Sometimes you, you're you just trying. So hard. Yeah, you, maybe you react. It, it would have been close, Pete, as you mentioned. It was headed toward this near sideline. Let's see if we can see it on replay. It's going to come right at us. Yeah, it would have yeah. been yeah, close. It would have been close. And again, the man. The Costa Texero with a key kill to tie up this match in set number four at 19. This set has been back and forth. A point here and a point there for both squads. Middle of the floor, that's Bryant. Put it into the Looked like he put it into the net. I don't know if that was blocked, but point to B New Bedford nonetheless, 20 to 19. Silva's pumped up, ready to serve again for New Bedford, leading 20 to 19. Tip, Rockton's Barbo New Bedford's Barboza was there. That's Ayala just playing it over safely. Young played it over safely. Both teams being very cautious on this point. And then the blockers were there. Young and Bryant for Brockton. And we're tied at 20. Here we go again. And a yellow card coming out. Some unsportsmanlike conduct. I'm not sure on the player. Might have been seven. Not sure. Really shouldn't speculate. We're not, we're not sure, but there was a yellow card. So of course, that means that we had Lopes go off the floor, so maybe it was him. I think that's the, the result of the yellow card. And we're ready to resume. 20 apiece. Oh, and that's a service oh. ace. New Bedford just total lack of communication there. It was a knuckleball from Dylan Him, and so well placed it went between two players and neither reacted to it. That's him again. Ayala's there this time. 
And then the block. New Bedford able to keep it alive. Bryant went for the tip. New Bedford is there. Silva. Rockton trying to react, keep it alive here. Bryant does. Silva on the outside. Oh. It was not outside, an accurate set. Outside the antenna, I think. Yes, the set was a little bit off there, and then the New Bedford player could not get to it, so the point goes to Brockton, and New Bedford calls a timeout. Whalers trailing it here now in set four, 22-20. It's been a crazy match, Pete. A, it has been. It has been. New Bedford began the afternoon winning that first set 25-9. to nine. I, I don't think I'd be alone to say, you know, we were sitting here thinking maybe a straight set win for the yeah, Whalers. no doubt. The way Brockton's record had been so far this year. But Brockton came back to win the second match 25-23. They won the third 25-23. And these last, the, this one and the previous two matches, the point total has been close the whole game. It's been very close, and Brockton has been able to just use the word several times, be resilient to stay alive here. And they've won the second and third set by identical scores, as you mentioned, of 25-23. And now in position to win the match at 22-20. Two-point lead over New Bedford here as we get to those critical points down the stretch. This is a huge point, and that's why Ben Caturley called the timeout. Obviously, you get to 23-20, then all of a sudden one point, and, and now they're within striking distance of winning the match. Him serving. And the blockers there again for Brockton. Tip there from Bryant, could not put it away. New Bedford just bumping it over. Back set here, tip from Young. Silva was there. Shields could not put one away. New Bedford here and Bryant just plays it over. On the outside. Again, Rosa, he could not finish it. Brockton keeps it alive. Tremendous point here. Salita Vars, and what a Still nice alive. dig there by Brockton. Oh! And Salita Tavares got the tip and blocked it successfully. A huge point for New Bedford, 22-21. We've seen a lot of long volleys, too, this afternoon. Tremendous point there by both sides. And they let that oh. one go. Oh, they're going to say it was deflected. And they're, gonna, they're pointing to Brockton. They're going to say it was tipped. I don't know if it was Ayala. It must have been because it didn't yeah, look like he, it happened at the net. He Again, we're going to have to look on the replay if we can get to it. Well, it's very close to number two. Well, we'll have to go back. And take it, a look at it in slow motion. New Bedford comes up with a critical point there. Ayala striking back. 23-22. Now, you, if you noticed on that play, he took his hand away and put it behind his back and went, no, no, no. <laughs> Was he trying to sell it to the ref? Yes. Here we go again. Oh, it looks like maybe indeed. Yeah. Santeo serving. Barboza. Santeo just bumps it over, and that's out. He knew it. And that sets up match point for Brockton. 24-22. Going back to serve will be Jesus Castro. That's Silva, Barboza, and Shields put it into the net, and Brockton comes from behind early on. 
losing set number one, 25 to nine, and then winning three consecutive close ones, Pete, by scores of 25-23, 25-23, and 25-22. As we said, Brockton uh, pretty much spreading out the uh, scoring. We have Jason Bryant unofficially with seven kills, three aces. Lee Mendes with six kills and Dylan him with three. For New Bedford, it was Dilson DeCosta Teixeira who was all over the place. I have him with 15 kills. 12 for Nick Rosa. And also, uh, again, I have to compliment the play of Connor Silva, which is fantastic. Uh, as uh, many times the first person to hit the ball who sets up plays. But credit to Brockton for not falling apart after going down 25 to nine and coming back to win three very close games and uh, walk away with the victory. Yeah, you have to compliment Jack Olson, veteran coach, longtime coach at Brockton and his squad for coming here to New Bedford with a two and four record and then being so resilient after losing that first set 25-9 and coming back to win in three consecutive from there by very close scores, 25-23 Brockton in set two, 25-23 Brockton in set three, 25-22 Brockton in set four. It wasn't easy, but they found a way to do it. That'll do it from the Beardsworth Gonzalez Gymnasium on the campus of New Bedford High School where Brockton has defeated New Bedford tonight in four sets in boys volleyball action. For Pete Braley and all of our staff here at the New Bedford Cable Network, I'm Joe Cabral. Thanks for joining us tonight, and have a good night, everyone. Is there for me if I'm real?